I'm sure many of us like using credit cards. Like, it's fun, right? Procrastination is like a credit card. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. I invite Team SA to present the assessment of correlation between bedtime procrastination and anxiety. with an immense amount of academic workload, unrealistic deadlines from our professors, level-ending tests and assignments, the fear of failing, and of course, the pressures of our parents. Dealing with these challenges every day can be a ceaseless battle. And of course, the crucial exams are always right around the corner. By the time we're done with all the work we're supposed to do during the day, it's already 11 in the night. <laughs> Study in academics and work, but a lesser 
this lecture about sleep procrastination. Sleep procrastination is delayed going to bed without any external cause. The person compromises on the sleep and does other activities despite knowing their past importance. This is a classical example of the intention behavior gap. Revenge, bedtime procrastination, as the media calls it, was first noted in China, where the people work 996. This means that an average person in China works from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for six days a week, leaving very little time to do the things that he enjoys. But what does revenge have to do with this? It means that we are getting revenge. For a busy daytime, when our schedules are out of control, we do this by staying up late at night when we do have control by doing the things that we love. It is the only safe way to revolt. Think of it as your inner teenager, stomping his foot down, complaining about the long hours and a bad faith, refusing to go to bed at a reasonable hour. A regular habit of red time procrastination leads to sleep deprivation, which have, um, which have many negative mental and physical effects. A plethora of negative effects can be seen, like depression, hypertension, obesity, stroke and anxiety. Through our study, we wish to correlate bedtime procrastination and anxiety in undergraduate medical students of India. Our study involved 439 medical students enrolled in Telangana's colleges offering five-year MBBS programs. Of this, 125 were men and 314 were women. Age, gender, the year of study, and the specifics of the place of living and whether they live alone or with family were covered by the social demographic questionnaire. The bedtime procrastination scale and the generalized anxiety disorder questionnaires, the degree of anxiety and bedtime procrastination was measured. Upon correlation of the bedtime procrastination scale and the GAT7 scale using the variables gender and duration of sleep showed a significant difference of 0.05. A positive correlation was obtained between generalized anxiety and bedtime procrastination. Upon further dissection of the data, it was found that increasing levels of generalized anxiety showed higher levels of bedtime procrastination mean. This means that people suffering from severe anxiety showed higher levels of bedtime procrastination tendencies. Stop using electronics before going to bed at night. Out of the whole spectrum of white light, blue light interferes with the body's ability to create melatonin at the most. This makes it harder for you to fall asleep. An effort must be made for the optimization of time. We shouldn't become answers in a week. We must strive for greater productivity rather than just simple activity. Sabotaging one sleep schedule is an active choice most individuals are partaking in. And sleep is often viewed as an inconvenience for a task, and delaying it is an act of railing against it. We must strive for greater productivity. Try to imagine how you feel when you are well rested, you feel refreshed, and able to handle the challenges of the coming day. We should also have a big schedule and we must strongly adhere to that schedule. As a future doctor, you will have to make crucial decisions all the time. You will have, in the literal sense, people's lives in your hands. Improper time management, sleep deprivation and poor mental health can have a negative impact on your decision making and cause lapses in your judgment during situations of emergency, making the doctor liable to compromise patient care. Would you have faith in a doctor who is tired and sleep deprived? Warren Buffett said the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. We must conquer our bad habits before they conquer us, before it's beyond repair. We must create awareness and treat these problems at their roots. Make your mental health a priority. Give yourself a liquid break during the day and don't sacrifice your sleep. Productivity is the result of a commitment to excellence, focused planning, and intelligent effort. Change begins at the end of your comfort zone. Believe in yourselves. You can do it. Thank you. Thank you.
go out, have you know, cool drinks or whatever, they have caffeine, but they come home, they sleep eight hours, but the next day they're tired again. That's because they're not they're not getting the REM sleep yet quiet. Thank you. Thank you. 